Let's get started on today's notes over multiplying matrices. And first, let's talk about the matrix product. The matrix product, and let's write that here, the matrix product is the product of two or more matrices. So we're going to be multiplying two or more matrices together. You can only multiply matrices when the number of columns, those are our vertical, uh, those go vertically, the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows, those go horizontal, in the second matrix. Order matters when multiplying matrices. It is not commutative when you're multiplying matrices. Order matters. So let's look at this first little example. When we're given matrix A, matrix A is a three by two matrix. Remember that's three rows, two columns. So it's rows by columns and let's write that down. Remember, rows by columns. Rows first, columns second. So rows by columns. The first matrix, if I'm multiplying matrix A times matrix B, matrix A is a three by two matrix. And I've got that written right here. Matrix B is a two by two matrix. I've got that written right here. You can only multiply matrices when these two inner numbers, let's call them, are the same. Okay, so the number of columns in the first matrix, that's right here, is the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. When you do that, your matrix product, your resulting matrix, is going to be a three by two matrix. So if we look at our little second example, if I were to multiply matrix B times matrix A in that order, First, let's write the dimensions of matrix B. It's a two by two matrix. Matrix A is a three by two matrix. As you can see, the two inner numbers, so the number of columns in the first matrix, is not equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So this is not the same, so it's not defined. Not defined. So you try. Tell whether each product is defined. If so, state its dimensions. When we look at problem number one, we're going to multiply matrix E, which is a four by two matrix, times matrix F, which is a two by three matrix. So if I write the dimensions of matrix E, which is four by two, and I'm going to multiply that times matrix F, which is two by three, I can see that my two inner numbers are the same. So the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. Yes, this matrix, matrix is defined. The matrix product is defined and it's going to result in a four by three matrix. Let's look at number two. We're going to multiply matrix G times matrix H in that order. Matrix G, G is a three by one matrix. Matrix H is a two by three matrix. You can see our two inner numbers are not the same. Therefore, the matrix product is not defined. Let's look at number three. Now we're multiplying matrix G times matrix F in that order. Remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Order matters. So matrix G times matrix F in that order. We've got a three by one matrix. We're going to multiply it by a two by three matrix. We can see our two inner numbers are not the same. Therefore, our matrix product is not defined. Let's look at our last example here. Now we're multiplying these same two matrices together, but we're switching the order. We're multiplying matrix F times matrix G, and matrix F is a two by three matrix. Matrix G is a three by one matrix. Now when we multiply it in this order, we can see our two inner numbers are the same. So the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. Therefore, the matrix product is defined and our resulting matrix is going to be a two by one matrix. So let's move on and let's find the matrix product. Now this can be kind of confusing because there's a process that goes with this. So in a matrix product, your matrix product, let's say we're multiplying these two matri matrices together, matri matrix A times matrix B, and I've got all these different colors and you'll see why. Each element in the matrix product, IJ, is the sum of the products. 
So we're adding to find the sum, multiplying to, multiplying to find the product. So the sum of the products of consecutive, that's back to back, entries in row I in matrix A and column J in matrix B. So first let's talk about the dimensions of our matrix product. So if we're multiplying in this order, our product matrix, we're gonna multiply matrix A times matrix B. Matrix A is a two by three matrix. Matrix B is a three by one matrix. We absolutely can multiply them together and our resulting matrix is gonna be a two by one matrix. So as you can see, I've already got that outlined for you here. So what you're gonna do, I've got each row in matrix A a different color. So this top row is red, the bottom row is green, and then I only have one column in matrix B and it's all purple. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna multiply four times four, and I've got that for you here. Then you're gonna multiply seven times negative six. I've got that here. Then you're gonna multiply two times one, and I've got that there. Those are the products of consecutive in entries. And then we're gonna find the sum of those products. So we're gonna be adding each of those products together. So four times four, is 16, seven times negative six is negative 42, and then two times one is two. And when I combine these, I get negative 24. And now let's see if we can change colors here. First, let me erase all of this so it doesn't get super duper confusing because now we're gonna move to the second row in matrix A. And I'm gonna change colors here. So let's do this one right here. So now I'm gonna multiply three times four, and I've got that written for you here. Then six times negative six, I've got that written for you here. Then five times one, and I've got that written for you here. And then we're gonna find the sum of those products. So we're gonna be adding them together. Three times four is 12, six times negative six is negative 36, five times one is five. And when I combine those, I get negative 19. That's my matrix product. So now you try, I would encourage you to pause the video and try to find the product of these two matrices. Go ahead and do that now. So to find the product of matrix A times matrix E, let's first look at the dimensions of our matrices and make sure that we can multiply them. So matrix A is a two by three matrix. Matrix E is a three by two matrix. My two inner numbers are the same. Therefore, my matrix product is defined and it's going to result in A two by two matrix. So I've got that written for you here. So let's talk about what goes in this first entry, upper left. I'm going to multiply my consecutive entries together. So I'm gonna multiply four times three, and then I'm gonna add that to the product of seven times negative one, and then I'm gonna add that to the product of two and six. When I do that, four times three plus seven times negative one plus two times six is 17. So now let's look at what goes in our second row. In our second row, now I'm gonna multiply this row times the same column. So three times three, and I'm doing this one right here, three times three plus six times negative one plus five, times six. When I multiply those together and then I find the sum of those products, I get 33. So now let's move on to our second column. And I'm going to erase all of this because it's probably very confusing, but I'm gonna find, I'm gonna write in a different color. Okay, let's do this one. So now we're gonna go back to our first row, but we're moving on to our second column. So now I'm gonna multiply four times four for this entry right here, four times four plus seven times zero plus two times two. And when I find those products and then I find the sum of those products, I should get 20. Now let's move on to our second row, second column. Three times four, this one right here, three times four, 
plus 6 times 0 plus 5 times 2. So I know this is kind of confusing, but 3 times 4 plus 6 times 0 plus 5 times 2 is 22. And there's our matrix product for this 2 by 3 and this 3 by 2 matrix. So let's move on to our application problem. This is a revenue cost profit application problem. I'm not a super huge fan of matrices in this type of problem. I really love Microsoft Excel. But here's an example of how you would use this. So let's read this. Double Batch Cookie Company currently sells two types of cookies, their signature chocolate chip and newly created cinnamon pumpkin cookies. The table on the left, it's over here, shows the number of batches of cookies sold in the months of October and November for each type of cookie. So let's look at what we're given. I see chocolate chip. I see 15 batches were sold in October for chocolate chip. I see 24 batches of cinnamon pumpkin were sold in October. And then I can look at each of those cookies for November. The table on the right shows the revenue, cost, and profit for each batch of each cookie, each batch of each cookie. By creating a matrix for each table, and then using matrix multiplication, we can determine the total cost, revenue, and profit for both types of cookies for the months of October and November. So let's look at this. In our first matrix, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers in this table and I'm going to write them in our 2 by 2 matrix here, 11 and 16. If I multiply those by, and then if I, in the second matrix, I'm actually going to write these as well. All I'm doing is I'm taking the data in this table and I'm putting it in matrix form. If I were to multiply the first matrix, which is a two by two matrix, times the second matrix, which is a two by three matrix, and I can absolutely do that because the inner numbers are the same, my matrix product is gonna be a two by three matrix. But as you can see, I've got that written here, a two by three matrix. But in this application problem, what does each entry represent? Well, this right here, the two, that's going to be the number of rows. What were the labels in our rows for our first matrix? October and November. And that's why I've got those written over here, October and November. Okay, in our matrix product, what should the columns represent? Well, the columns are going to represent this right here. What did the columns in our second matrix represent? Revenue, cost, and profit. And I've got those written here. Revenue, cost, and profit. And I'm not going to take the time to actually multiply all of this together. I'm just going to show you what it would be. When you multiply these two matrices together, you get 780, 219, 561, 540, 151, and 389. And since I've labeled, you can see what each of these represents. For example, the total revenue for the month of November is 540. The cost was 151, therefore their profit total for both types of cookies was 389 for the month of November. So let's move on. And let's talk about square matrices. We really need to understand square matrices for what we're doing in the next couple of days. So a square matrix is any matrix that has the same number of rows as columns, an n by n matrix. So as you can see, I've got matrix B over here. It's a two by two matrix. It's square because it has the same number of rows as it does columns. The main diagonal of a square matrix is the diagonal from the upper left corner to the lower right corner. And I've got that highlighted in yellow. The multiplicative identity matrix, multiplicative, identity matrix matrix goodness and a lot of people just call this the identity matrix is any square matrix named with the letter i whose main diagonal entries equal one 
all the other entries equal zero. So if you've got a matrix like this that has the main diagonal is one, that is a multiplicative identity matrix. If you've got a three by three matrix, it'll look like this. So this is what the identity matrix of a three by three matrix looks like. So now we can talk about the powers of square matrices. So if I have, for example, matrix A, which is a three by two matrix, and I have matrix B, which is a two by two matrix. If I'm going to find the power of a square matrix, I'm gonna multiply it by itself. And we're only talking about raising these matrices to a power of two today. So matrix B, if I'm going to raise that to the power of two, that means I'm going to be multiplying matrix B, which looks like this, times matrix B, which looks like this. And let's write it out so we can really see what we're looking at. We've got a two by two matrix, and we're going to multiply it by a two by two matrix. We can do this because our inner numbers are the same, and our resulting matrix, our matrix product, is also going to be a two by two matrix. So let's look at this. So I'm going to multiply and follow me on this. Let me see if I can change the numbers here, colors here. I'm going to multiply negative eight in this first, um, first row, first column, negative eight times negative eight. I'm going to add that to zero times two. That's going to be in that location in my matrix product. Now let's move on to the second row, first column. Now I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 8. I'm going to add that to 5 times 2. Now let's move over here. Okay, we're going to be looking at our still our first row, but now we're moving on to our second column. Negative 8 times 0, and I'm going to add that to 0 plus or er, 0 times 5. Moving on. Now I'm moving on to the second row, second column. Two times zero plus five times five. And now when I actually find these sums, my matrix product, negative eight times negative eight is 64 plus zero, that's 64. Two times negative eight is negative 16 plus five times two is 10. Negative 16 plus 10 is negative six. If I do the same thing for the second column over here, I get zero, and then bottom right, I get 25. And that's my matrix product. Let's move on to our last example, A squared. Well, recall that A is a three by two matrix, so we're gonna be multiplying a three by two matrix times a three by two matrix. But my inner numbers are not the same, therefore, this is not defined. Matrix A is not a square matrix. Because of that, I cannot take the take it, I can't raise it to a power. Okay, so I can't multiply it by itself. It is not defined. And that concludes your notes over multiplying matrices. I know it was long, I hope it was helpful. Good luck.